Good morning, Coach Slack here once again, continuing our readings in the Synaxarian, the lives of the saints of the Orthodox Church. On this, the 15th day of July, we celebrate the memory of the holy martyrs Kyriakus and Julita. Saint Julita was born into the high nobility of Iconium. but She acquired true nobility, that given by the Holy Spirit in baptism. Becoming a widow, she renounced a second marriage in order to live in piety and God-pleasing works, together with her three-year-old son, Kyriakus. When Domitian, governor of Lyconia, began furiously to apply the edicts of general persecution of the Christians sent by Diocletian in 304, she sought refuge in Seleucia, preferring to renounce all her possessions and know the hardship of harsh exile rather than deny Christ. But she found in this town an even greater agitation as Alexander, the emperor's envoy, had produced a reign of terror there by torturing and mercilessly putting to death all who would not submit to the edicts. Giving way then to anger, she left for Tarsus and Cilicia with her son and two handmaids. However, she found the tyrant there. He had overtaken her and was carrying out his dreadful task. Informed of the presence of this noble refugee, Alexander arrested her and had her appear before his tribunal, her son in her arms. The servants were able to escape, and they followed the unfolding of events from hiding. Interrogated about her identity, Julita simply replied, I am a Christian. The furious governor had her put to torture. The torturers tied her and flogged her with ox sinews, while others, having taken her weeping baby from her, gave him to the governor. Alexander took him in his arms and, placing him on his knees, caressed him and tried to embrace him saying in a gentle voice, Let this sorceress go and come to me, your father. I will make you my son and the heir of all my riches, and you will live a peaceful life without any cares. A baby in appearance, but possessing in reality the wisdom of an old man, Kyriakus turned to look at his mother, who was in torment, and repulsed the advances of the tyrant, beating him with his tiny fist and scratching him, crying out, I too am a Christian. He kicked the tyrant in the ribs. Alexander let out a cry of pain, and his spurious tenderness changed to fury. He grabbed the child by the foot and hurled it onto the marble staircase that led to the tribune. The holy child's skull was broken, and he immediately gave his soul into God's keeping, sanctifying the ground with his blood and carrying off to heaven the crown of valiant athletes of piety. St. Julita was filled with divine joy and thanked the Lord for having opened the gates of glory to her son, Taken before the governor, who was in no way appeased, she declared that no suffering would succeed in overcoming her love for God, and that the torturers would, on the contrary, allow her to join her dear son. Alexander ordered that she be laid on a rack and her flesh be lacerated with iron nails. Then that boiling pitch be poured over her limbs. In spite of the suffering, she continued to confess her faith in the Holy Trinity and added, I am in a hurry to join my son, to rejoice with him in the kingdom of heaven. Realizing that he would get nowhere, Alexander ordered that she be beheaded. When the saint arrived at the scaffold, a short way outside the town, she asked the executioners for a moment's respite to pray. Falling to her knees, she thanked the Lord for having counted her worthy to enter his nuptial chamber with the wise virgins. She had only just said the Amen when the executioner swung his sword and cut off her head. Her body and that of St. Kyriakus were thrown into the ditch reserved for those condemned as common felons. On the following night, St. Julita's two handmaids came to take the precious relics and buried them in a cave in the area. When the light of faith was able to shine freely during the reign of St. Constantine, one of these women, who had survived, revealed where the relics were hidden, and from then onwards crowds of the faithful hastened to take fragments of these precious relics, which worked numerous healings. There's a couple icons during the readings. Uh, the first is from the Monastery of Anapavas, Meteora, from the 16th century. And the second was from the Monastery of Dionysio and Athos, from the 16th century. Through the prayers of thy saints, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Amen.